Robotics is a hot term. It's a, it's a technique that uses a robot uh, uh, to do um, uh, minimally invasive resections. Uh, and uh, from a surgeon's point of view, uh, it seems to be, it's almost like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, the surgeon actually is sitting behind the curtain at the console uh, using the, lapar the robotic arms from a distance. Uh, and so th this is one situation which is uh, a little foreign for most surgeons to not be scrubbed into the operating field and doing a, a procedure. So the surgeon actually is behind a console uh, working with 3D imaging and their hands uh, that are associated with arms that are on the field uh, performing a procedure. Now, uh, with pancreatic uh, diseases, the use of robotic surgery uh, is quite interesting and, and is being tested and uh, looked at for this particular uh, problem. Uh, the present state of the art is, is mostly um, experimental, particularly for a Whipple procedure. Uh, mostly today it's been used for uh, patients who have uh, premalignant uh, lesions in the head of the pancreas or tumors that don't come close to the blood vessels that sit right around the pancreas. Uh, so if, we, if you will, perhaps uh, less complex or easier um, uh, tumors are being uh, at least initially looked at uh, for uh, instance for pancreatic duodenectomy. Robotics has also been looked for at for distal pancreatectomies and some surgeons have been utilizing it. Uh, we use mostly uh, conventional minimally invasive techniques because the incisions, small incisions are the same and most of what can be accomplished uh, uh, robotically can be done laparoscopically. The, the true value of the robot is in sewing things, sewing things together. And so in pancreas, uh, the biggest value would prospectively be in doing a Whipple procedure where you have to make those three new connections. With a distal pancreatectomy, there are no new connections that are made. The tumor within the substance of the pancreas is uh, cut out, and, uh, and that's it. And then we seal the back portion of where the cut surface of the pancreas is. So there's no new connections that are necessary. So therefore, there's probably not a great advantage of using robotics for distal pancreatectomy. We're in the process of investigating the role for pancreatic odudenectomy, but I would have to say that it's mostly an experimental technique that needs to be tested, and we're in the process of looking at that. So, so patients with pancreatic cysts, pancreatic cysts is a broad category. Uh, they can be completely benign, related to some inflammation of the pancreas where a little cystic collection developed, or they can be uh, both benign or what we call premalignant or uh, tumors or cysts of the pancreas. So what I mean by that there is uh, really uh, three or four categories. So we talked about there's benign cysts. Uh, small benign cysts <clears throat> in the substance of the pancreas require really no further uh, treatment. Uh, there can be uh, serous cysts of the pancreas, which we don't believe to be pre-malignant, and only when they reach a certain size or mechanical kind of uh, problem uh, that patients may be symptomatic from will we would consider resecting them. Then there's another group of cysts in the pancreas, uh, which are mucinous neoplasms. There can be mucinous uh, cyst adenomas of the pancreas, uh, which are potentially precancerous, and we would recommend removal. Uh, or uh, an entity called an interductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, IPMN. Now, IPMNs can involve the main pancreatic duct, the main pancreatic tubing, or a branch. Sort of, if you think of the pancreas, there can be little out branches or tree limbs. Those that are out on the uh, side branches, um, if they're small, can be followed as well. So there's certain criteria to uh, determine whether surgical intervention is required for uh, cystic uh, neoplasms in the pancreas. And uh, a very, there are really two different ways we evaluate it. One is by imaging, either by a CAT scan or an MRI of the pancreas, which will discover this. Many of them are asymptomatic. No one really even knows that they had this. They can have a little vague abdominal pain. Uh, they could, patients could be imaged for another uh, problem and incidentally found these little cysts or, or a cyst in the pancreas. But once they become apparent, then the next question is, what should we do about it? 
So very small cysts, in, uh, a, a very small being less than one to two centimeters or so in size cyst, uh, typically can be followed. Once they start to reach you know, two centimeters or so, we would start to think about doing endoscopic ultrasound, uh, which is a technique that our gastroenterologists are very adept at doing that allows them to look at the cyst with ultrasound uh, by introducing an endoscope into the stomach, much like an endoscopy for an ulcer or something of that uh, sort, and then moving the ultrasound probe at the end of the gastroscope uh, to look at the pancreas, because the pancreas sits very close to the stomach, so you can get an excellent look at the pancreas. And so what can be uh, discerned from this is, number one, uh, is it uh, a main duct uh, pancreatic cyst? Uh, is there a solid nodule within the cyst? Even very small nodules can be picked up by endoscopic ultrasound, which is an important uh, distinguishing feature, and I'll tell you why. And then, uh, uh, lastly, they can actually introduce a fine needle into the pancreatic cyst and aspirate fluid, and that fluid can be te tested for mucin, uh, it can be tested uh, and sent to pathology for cytology to see if the cells look abnormal. And based on some of those findings would dictate whether we proceed with surgery. So absolute criteria for resection would be the following. It would be a cyst that is three centimeters or so in size, patients that have, uh, and these are mucinous cysts, mucinous cysts. So the aspiration from the endoscopic ultrasound uh, demonstrate a mucinous cyst in the pancreas, three centimeters in size, or if there's a solid nodule in the cyst, then we start worrying about whether there's a small malignancy developing within the cyst, or if the patient has uh, symptoms. So if a patient has symptoms of pancreatitis, which can be related to a mucinous cyst, we would recommend resection. And then main duct pancreatic uh, IPMNs also should be resected. Sometimes the resections for main duct IPMNs can be segmental. In other words, a pancreatic oduodenectomy, a distal pancreatectomy. Occasionally, the process can involve the entire pancreas in which we would have to do what's called a total pancreatectomy. That's a larger operation, of course, and what happens with total pancreatectomy <clears throat> is that patients become diabetic. And so we need a compliant patient and someone who's closely monitored after doing a total pancreatectomy. Uh, and so we are fortunate to have excellent supportive staff here at New York Presbyterian that can uh, deal with those particular problems. And then patients will also require some digestive enzymes uh, to replace what the pancreas provides. Uh, so pancreatic cysts, the majority of them, are something that can be followed or are meaningless in terms of the patient's health. There is a subset, as we pointed out, these mucinous cysts that need to be followed very closely and in some instances, uh, with the criteria I mentioned before, require formal resection. Now, when they exist in the body and tail of the pancreas, we routinely will use laparoscopic techniques to take it out. In the head of the pancreas, this would be a potentially a good entity to offer robotic surgery for uh, and work with the, the issue of minimally invasive approaches to this. But again, the most important thing, and I think most of the preliminary studies with whether it's minimally invasive, robotic, uh, or open surgery, is really in the healing of the surgical site. In other words, if you're doing a Whipple procedure or pancreatic oduodenectomy, it's the healing of the new connection sites that really distinguish how a patient is going to do postoperatively. In other words, are they going to have a side effect or not? It really has more to do with what's done internally. Uh, than the incision itself. And I want to stress that because I think patients shouldn't pigeonhole themselves in terms of deciding what they're going to do based simply on the size of the incision. Everyone will heal an incision. It's what's going on inside that's important, the biology of their tumor, for instance, if they have pancreatic cancer, and in the quality of the surgical procedure itself.